um, fill out your information, download the ISO version, um, probably 32-bit, uh, but if you're going to be using VirtualBox, which is what we're going to use for this, uh, grab the ISO. Uh, then grab VirtualBox for whatever OS you have. I, of course, have the OS X1 because I'm using a Mac. It's a simple download, point, click, install. Once you get it installed, you're going to want to build your virtual machines. I've already done this, but I'll show you how you do it real quick. You go ahead, hit new, hit continue, name it. I'm going to call it test, or I'll call it demo. Um, for the backtrack one, it's going to be Linux. And it's actually hit Ubuntu, because that's what the latest version is based off. Uh, defaults are usually fine. If you want to change the location of where it's stored, you can do that here by clicking this icon. I'll just leave it because I'm going to delete it after this video. Okay, so it creates the virtual machine. Um, if you have the backtrack ISO downloaded, what you'll have to do is go into settings and go under storage, hit the uh, CD hit the CD over here, and you'll need to choose the uh, ISO file. And I have no idea where that ISO is now, but go ahead and choose the ISO, and then you'll be able to boot to uh, Backtrack. And then once you're booted in Backtrack, you can go ahead and install it into the virtual hard disk, so you don't have to boot from the ISO every time, you can delete it. There'll be a link on the desktop, just click Install. I'll move that later. So you're all installed with Backtrack and you do Windows XP the same way. You're going to need a Windows CD, um, you know, figure it out, look for it. So the most important thing is if you're trying to exploit XP from Backtrack and you need these two to talk, what you need to do is go into settings for both of them, go under network, and change this, it's probably going to be under NAT, change it to host only adapter. Now this is going to segregate this machine off of the real internet and just give it a virtual host uh, adapter. And if you do that the same way with the XP machine, they'll be able to talk to each other. That way you'll have your own segregated little virtual network that you can play around on. They'll be able to talk to each other, you won't have to worry about anything else, you won't have to worry about uh, you know, it affecting other machines on your network. Um, you won't have to worry about getting in trouble if you're on a college campus network. So that's the way to do it.